fourth edition of the Sales Podcast. I'm Wes Schaefer, the Sales Whisperer, your host. Today we have Mr. Shane O'Flaherty. Uh, I met him uh, through some mutual friends online. Uh, he is following his faith. Uh, after 20 plus years as a CEO in corporate America, uh, he left it all behind to create an iPhone app, of all things. And um, he's got a great story of listening to a calling and, uh, and not ignoring it, but it did take him a little while to hear it. So uh, I think you will enjoy today's story of, um, of following your faith, but also uh, his entrepreneurial journey, uh, raising money, partnering with smarter people than him, surrounding himself with experts uh, to make this thing happen. Uh, so in that vein, today's funny is about a church service. It was a Wednesday night church service, and it was the last day of hunting season. And the pastor asked, you know, who had bagged a deer? And no one raised their hand. So he was kind of puzzled. He knew he had some good hunters in his congregation. He said, you know, last Sunday, many of you said um, you, know, you were missing because of hunting season. You know, I had the whole congregation pray for your deer. And one hunter groaned, well, it worked. They're all safe. Any hunters out there? All right, that's a good one. That's a clean one. Come on now. Come on. All right, let's move right in to the sales podcast creed, which is today is my day. I work diligently towards my goals, which are bigger than me. I bite off more than I can chew because only then will I truly know my current limits and surpassing them becomes my new goal for today. Through education, accountability partners, and bold, decisive action, today will be better than yesterday and tomorrow will be better yet. I'm ready to produce. Um, so before we bring on Mr. Shane, um, if you are near a computer or you can do it on your iPhone, smartphone, head on over to theartoftheclothes.guru. I've got a three-part video series. It's free uh, that you can check out. Um, video one is up now. Video two will come out tomorrow, September 4th. Um, and this is coinciding leading up to the launch of the next version of the live uh, class, which begins September 16th, 2014. So if you listen to this after that, um, I will be doing this course a few times a year uh, so you can get on the waiting list. But uh, head on over now if you're listening to this in the early part of September and avail yourself of some more free sales training. So now let's bring on Mr. Shane O'Flaherty. Shane O. Is it O'Flaherty? You know, I'm not Irish. How do you say that? Shane O'Flaherty. All right, it just rolls off your tongue. Shane O'Flaherty. Just roll. <laughs> uh, I haven't had my whiskey yet. It's only nine o'clock, so cut, <laughs> cut me some slack. I've been sick. You know, usually I'm drinking by now, but you know, <laughs> all the way from Chicago, Downers Grove, Illinois, uh, founder uh, of Growing the Faith. Uh, we're talking about your your new app and uh, how you came about to, to launch that. But uh, welcome to the Sales Podcast. How are you? Good. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. So uh, thanks for taking the time out of your day. And um, oh, I got to ask you. So a good friend of mine here, he's actually uh, our sixth baby's godfather. Uh, he's a McGuire from Chicago. and He's a Blackhawks fan. Are you a big Blackhawks fan? You know, I'm I'm not growing up in California. Hockey was never my forte, uh, but I adopted the local Blackhawks as, a, you know, a team that I would root for. All right. That's good because, you know, Kevin listens to this and he visits Chicago. So <laughs> if you weren't a Blackhawks fan, he would like find you and, you know, break into a fight. And then all of a sudden there'd be a hockey match. Yeah. After I left San Jose, California, uh, they actually had, had developed a hockey team called the Sharks. There you so, go. Uh, but I do like the Blackhawks. All right. Cause I'm just learning this whole hockey thing because of Kevin. So, uh, good sport. Uh, so, Hey, uh, would you mind for our listeners, you know, those that don't know you, what you're working on, would you mind giving us a little thumbnail sketch of who you are and, and how you came to be on this here podcast? Great. No, I appreciate the opportunity. No, Shane O'Flaherty. I'm uh, in Downers Grove, Illinois. You know, my, my business career has spanned uh, over 25 years in the travel space. Uh, started to work for United Airlines for a couple of years. Uh, I've traveled all around the world, visited just a, uh, a tremendous amount of countries. I've seen, you know, everything the world has to offer, both the good uh, and the challenging parts of life in different parts of the world for individuals. Um, so my, my, business career really has gone from the airlines and really into the hotel space. Uh, I used to work for a company called Preferred Hotels and Resorts, which is a, a chain of independent hotels, luxury hotels, sales, marketing, 
uh, and then quality assurance development uh, to ensure that the overall customer experience at a hotel is met. And then I moved on from there after five years and then uh, into a company called Mobile Travel Guide. And it is the star rate, the official star rating system in the United States uh, for hotels, for restaurants and spas. It was developed in 1958 as the interstate highway system in the U.S. was developed. Uh, they created a star rating system to help improve, to help a consumer identify, you know, what are good hotels and not so good hotels uh, throughout the country. And then... Um, with Mobile Travel Guide uh, was sales, marketing, uh, became the CEO of uh, Mobile Travel Guide um, you know, about eight, ten years ago. And with that, then began expanding the product overseas into Asia and then into Europe as well uh, with the intent on helping the consumer really navigate the hotel space, the restaurant space around the world. So providing great insight, great information and then allowing that consumer to make a more informed travel decision. And then eventually move the brand from mobile, which was a, a brand that we licensed from Exxon Mobile. Um, and then we began a relationship with the Forbes family, Forbes Media Company, and began uh, the process of transitioning the brand on a global basis to Forbes in about 2009, 2010. Uh, so very successful company. I, at there, I began a consulting division called Forbes Hospitality Consulting, uh, created from scratch, had an idea, uh, you know, had the opportunity and the investment to uh, build out that company. And then, you know, seven, eight years later, it's one of the top consulting companies in the world where all the top independent hotels uh, and chains, whether it's a Four Seasons, Ritz Carlton, Mandarin Oriental, uh, use our services to help us train them on how to improve the customer experience from a customer perspective. So you create a better hospitality environment. People feel better about themselves. Uh, and with that, uh, you provide a, best, a better guest experience. And then about a year ago, uh, one of my friends, uh, I went to University of Notre Dame. So one of my friends at University of Notre Dame and I had connected, he lives in the Silicon Valley uh, in California. And um, we were working together on a different project. And uh, in June of last year, uh, he's a venture capitalist, invests in a lot of app-related technology and companies. So earlier last year, his parish priest had actually moved on from one parish to the next. So they had a gap of about 60 days without a parish priest. And my friend was on the parish council. And said, um, you know, I better look at the technology of, of what we have here. We're in Menlo Park, part of the Silicon Valley, and see what we have from a technology perspective and see how I can assist our parish uh, with what they have and then assist them to see if there's any opportunities moving forward. So what, we, what he realized was at, at his parish, all the technology at the parish level, the Catholic, their Catholic parish, worked for uh, the parish staff, but it didn't work for the parishioner. And there was no product in the marketplace that had that system of engagement that connects the parishioner with the parish. Um, so he, we sat in a room and he says, hey, I got this crazy idea. I think it should work. Uh, again, bear in mind, I was in the travel space at that time for the past 20 years. And he whiteboarded it. And we sat there and we began discussing for two hours about uh, how we believe that we can create a product and create a business around it that can help advance the cause of growing people's faith. <clears throat> And in that, it creating an evangelization tool for the marketplace that helps people grow in their faith and then also creates other modules that simplify and make life more efficient for the uh, parishioner themselves. And uh, so then we connected with an another individual named Ryan Krieger. And Ryan had created a company called Little IAPS, which is out of South Bend, in Indiana. And they were the thought leaders, one of the thought leaders in the religious marketplace in creating apps. So they created the confessional app uh, a couple of years ago. They created the Missio app for Pope Francis. Um, and they also created a Rediscover app for the Archdiocese of St. Paul, Minneapolis. So the three of us really connected, um, you know, in late summer and then began the process of building out a business plan for our company. We call the company Growing the Faith. And um, with that, then in November of last year, we raised some capital. Um, so it was a for-profit kind of a social enterprise, uh, raised some capital to get the company off the ground. And then in, um, you know, and then Ryan began his process of building the product from scratch. And the product that we created was called One Parish. And I came on at a full-time basis in, uh, February 
and began working on kind of the sales and marketing aspect of bringing the product to market and encouraging parishes to, um, you know, connect with their consumer and reach their consumer with where they're at today and which is really on their smartphone. So if you think of, uh, you know, St. Paul or even Pope Francis, Pope Francis asked us to go in the streets and get dirty and meet people with where they're at and help them along their journey. And St. Paul always tells us, and also embrace this digital world that we live in. Um, you know, and, uh, and then St. Paul tells us to move outside the streets um, you know, outside our churches into the streets to connect people with where they're at. So, you know, we kind of internally, we call it St. Paul 2.0. So we're trying to reach people with where they're at and today's marketplace, they're on their smartphone, fortunately or unfortunately. So with the one parish product, we began building it and then we launched a beta version of it in, um, April of this year. And we started with four parishes inside the diocese of Joliet, uh, St. Mary's of Gaston, uh, Divine Savior, St. Isaac Jogues, and uh, St. Joseph's uh, in Downers Grove and Hinsdale were, you know, you know, as I met with them, they Im- immediately gravitated towards the product and said, we'd love to have this at our parish because we know we need it. Uh, and we need to reach um, the individuals, first of all, that, you know, to be more welcoming to the outsiders. Those are the 75% of individuals who don't come to Mass on a regular basis. And then we'd love to create products uh, to help challenge the insider. And then at the end of the day, make life more efficient. And all the research we did on Catholics, active Catholics in the marketplace, what they asked of the product that we created is, please make my life more efficient. Uh, Because within my parish, there's a lot going on. And I need to be aware of all that's going on. But today it's through emails and calendars and uh, there's nothing easy for me to access my parish. Uh, and I actually have to be proactive to go to the website as opposed to I'd like it pushed to me uh, in a way that's useful and relevant to me. So we began the process of uh, launching it. Uh, so we spoke at the masses, you know, as an example, at St. Mary's and Divine Savior, St. Isaac Joe's. And then we handed my family, we handed out, download the app cards at the end of mass. And the reception from the parishioners was absolutely amazing. They loved it uh, because we're really trying to meet them with where they're at from a technology perspective. And they're already there. Most people have smartphones. Most people use it. Unfortunately, most people look at their smartphone over a hundred times a day. So uh, how can we provide them with great Catholic content uh, and make it discoverable from one spot, which is on their phone. And there's a lot of wonderful Catholic content in the marketplace today. Uh, some amazing uh, individuals out there with great content, but the consumer has to go out and search for that. And they may not even know that these individuals exist. So what we're trying to do is make the content discoverable to an individual on their smartphone and then make it feel like it's brought to them by their parish. And that's the most important thing because what we're trying to grow is at an individual level, the parish community. And if we help people grow in their faith, um, that will assist in the process of growing the overall community itself. So the product was launched and great feedback. Um, an interesting story is, uh, with the products, you know, as I showed it to one of my friends, who's a, I call an actively disengaged Catholic, you know, in the stages of actively, actively disengaged, passively disengaged, um, you know, passively engaged and then actively engaged kind of the four stages of Catholicism, um, th- that are out there. I asked the individual, you know, what do you like about the app? And the individual looked at me and said, there's really not anything I like about the app. Um, and I said, well, you know, what do you like about your Catholic faith? And the individual responded and said, listen, I love Pope Francis. I love his peace and social justice. I love where he's going with the direction of the church. Uh, that's someone who is inspires me. So then we went back to, um, you know, inside the app itself and we decided to, you know, pull in Pope Francis's tweets on a daily basis. And then within two weeks we had Pope, Tra- Pope Francis's Twitter feed up on the app. And this individual now says she uses the app on a daily basis because, uh, we've created content that makes that's relevant to that individual. So we launched the product and, uh, been very successful. The closed beta, we closed it out. Uh, we finished it at the end of this month. Um, it has multiple components to the product, uh, from content. We're adding donation tools so you can donate over your phone, uh, to your parish or other great Catholic causes. Um, we're adding calendaring system uh, that allows you to know what's going on in the parish on a daily basis and then also a scheduling system 
So if your daughter has altar server practice on 8.30 in the morning, on sa- Sunday morning, then it goes actually to the calendar on your phone um, as opposed to the emails that go back and forth. And then if your daughter gets sick, you know, you just hit the substitute button and the message goes out to other individuals who are part of the altar serving group and someone right. hits accept and then uh, it's on their phone. So everything we're trying to do is build the product for the parishioner um, to make their life more efficient and then help them engage in their content, engage in the content that's relevant to them uh, on a daily basis. All right. All right. So, so there's a lot to discuss, discuss there. there. <laughs> yes. It's, it's an exciting product. And we're very passionate about what we're trying to build. Uh, well, let's talk about how you built this uh, because this is a lot of our listeners are – entrepreneurs, they're interested in maybe developing an app. If nothing else, they're interested in launching, growing their own businesses. Uh, but you, you know, you left a career in corporate America. Uh, but, you know, some interesting things you, you said in there was, you know, you, you partnered with people with great experience, right? You didn't just wing it. Uh, you didn't just, you know, try to self-teach yourself how to code, uh, you, would you say you were open to ideas? You know, you mentioned your, your classmate from Notre Dame, um, was he like putting the hard sell on you or did, I mean, it sounded like there was just a, a natural affinity there and, and it just resonated when he explained it. And then you just took a, a leap of faith. Yeah. You know, as you know, and I'm a firm believer in, in life to keep your eyes wide open you know, on all times, all basis, because I believe that, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit is working in uh, unique ways. And, uh, you know, at that time, I go back in time, uh, my wife has been involved in uh, getting her spiritual directorship degree uh, certification for the past two years. So it's, it's pretty interesting as she traversed that path, it began to open my eyes even more, you know, bear in mind, we have five kids, we're very active in our parish and our church. Um, and I began seeing the process of, of the good she was doing in the world. And I was in corporate America for 25 years. And, uh, you know, I began opening up my mind, you know, and I think it, to me it's the Holy Spirit. I don't believe in coincidences. And when he presented that opportunity myself, you know, I, I just had this feeling rush through me of I have to do this. This is important for the church. This is important for it's a social good enterprise that we can do, we can do well while doing good in the world. And, uh, as he mentioned it to me, you know, it was, it, the light went off in my head. Said, wow, this is an amazing idea that can do good in the world. Um, you know, and I think I can create, you know, and work and create a vision for a product that can be very successful. Hey, a, Shane, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know if you're, are you hitting your microphone? Maybe it's getting like a weird. Oh, sorry. Feedback. Are you there, Wes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the opportunity presented itself and the light bulb went on and, um, you know, I felt it was, it was my time in my life to, to, you know, to really step out of what my comfort zone was. And, you know, I'm in my mid forties and I have five kids, you know, and we're, you know, very active in the world and great evangelizers. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it's a risk that we took as a family and we, you know, we, thought long and hard about it, but we believe that in what we're trying to do and what we're trying to accomplish, uh, you know, there's a higher calling there. And it was a kind of a transformational moment for me. Um, you know, and then, then we made the final call and the final decision, you know, late in the year, the early 2000, earlier this year to make the, you know, the jump in two feet. So on the money raising side of things, um, you didn't do like a Kickstarter, Right. You did more of a traditional venture capital back, like angel investing or those types of funding, right? Correct. Yeah. So we went to market in what we call a series seed round, which is kind of the angel uh, investor role rollout. And then we went out to market really through our friends and family network. Uh, first and foremost, uh, my partner, uh, you know, who's out of California, led the funding to at least allow us to begin the process of building the product. Um, and then we went to market and then we began just really, uh, in meeting individuals, telling them about our vision. Um, you know, we, I think father Robert Barron says lead with the beautiful and that's what we try to do and what we're trying to accomplish. And then, um, you know, our goal was to raise $750,000 
in the series seed round. And, uh, you know, right now we're, we're approaching the end of our close and it's taken about six months, which has been a fascinating journey, uh, meeting with individuals and talking about our business, our business model and why we think it'll be successful, uh, moving forward. So yeah, it was a, it was a very interesting process and interesting journey to go out and raise the money. So we raised it really from uh, groups of individuals, um, you know, whether it was from ten thousand dollars up to fifty thousand uh, dollars. An individual had joined us on this on this mission. So how does one monetize an app like this? Um, you know, this is well, you're dealing in the nonprofit world, but you're doing it as a for-profit entity, right? Correct. So what, what is the plan? So, I mean, for, for folks out there that are looking uh, to follow a similar model, how, how do you eventually monetize this? Uh, so first of all, if, if, with, with any type of app that you build, the, the, one of the key issues as you build an app is you need to ensure that the individual is using the app. So that's, that's, the, that's the hardest thing to do is how do you create content that – is relevant and engaging to the consumer to use the app. And most apps that are built out there are, you know, they go to the graveyard, you know, probably, I don't even know how many, probably 90% of them go to the, the app graveyard in a very short period of time, even if they have a very cool product. So really it's building an app that works for, um, so ours is basically an app web solution. So everything on the app, we're actually creating, uh, you know, a mirror image of that on the web. And uh, we're creating an app that's interactive. So uh, as an example, and, and then and most apps that are out there that people have created are just informational apps. So it's taking your parish bulletin and putting it on the app. And the consumer wants more than that. They want to interact in the app, and they want to make sure that the app is relevant and useful for them. So a perfect example is we're creating this content stream that says, as a parishioner or as a Catholic, I can um, – I can say I want to be a better father, mother, daughter, sister, and what we're going to do is proactively send you snack size content, um, you know, on a daily basis that allows you to engage in your faith, uh, that help you be a better person based on the role that you pick. So consumers want to really interact. So the the, the key issue in developing an app is really making sure it's usable, and people want to go back to the app on a daily, a weekly basis. So. Um, that's one of the key issues with it. And then with the, creating the web solution to that is the, the concept of, you know, with, with Catholics, here comes everyone. So you want to make sure that you're fulfilling the need of everyone in the Catholic space. And then we built a backend SaaS platform for the parish itself. So any Catholic can use the app, download it. They can donate to their parish. And then if the parish wants to join, then uh, we connect the dots with the SaaS platform on the back end to the parish. So you create products in our world. We want to create products that, that fall into the vision of helping people grow in their faith. And then the useful tool aspect of it is then creating tools for the parishioner that uh, are useful for the parishioner, but also there's a potential revenue stream there. So as an example, um, with uh, donations, we take a small percentage of rev share of any donations that come through our platform. Uh, so that's a way for us to um, you know, earn revenue. And then the other side of the coin is your parish, you know, in a, in a typical parish, as an example, they have a parish bulletin, you know, where there's advertisers in the parish bulletin. And some parishes have up to my parish has 60 advertisers. Well, how do you take that content and then bring it to the consumer in a useful, relevant way using, using the app? So we've created or we're creating a parish business listings directory uh, on the app that allows uh, advertisers to advertise in there. And then as a prisoner, then I can search by, you know, lawyer or plumber or restaurant, whatever it may be, and then have access to that content 24-7. So those are our two main revenue streams. There's all these other ancillary revenue streams um, that we can go from there. But, we, you know, we offer it to the parish for free, the software, and then we offer it to the prisoner for free. Uh, and then we can build revenue streams and revenue models inside of that to um, – you know, ensure that we're successful long term, you know, for our investors, you know, because they want to return on their investments. Uh, and we believe we've, you know, can build that model to, you know, build a great product and then do well from a financial perspective as well. Well, and that's why I wanted to have you on I me. Mean, I got the app. It looks fantastic. But, you know, for for our listeners uh, who are not Catholic, which is probably most of them, you know, the lesson here is if if you can sell 
If you can make money through Catholics, you can make money anywhere. Because <laughs> Catholics, I don't know, man. We're just like a weird bunch. Um, I, so I, I've tried creating uh, business networking groups uh, through Catholic uh, parishes. And all anybody wants to do is discuss the faith. It's like, can we share a little business leads with one another? So right. if you can get these, I, I think the... The, the biggest and the second biggest groups of Christians in America are, are Catholics and former Catholics. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if you can get these lukewarm people uh, involved and engaged and get these nonprofit entities, you know, the Catholic parishes, get them involved and engaged, uh, then you've got a model that will spill over uh, into anything. So that's why, I, you know, I, I like this story, and I wanted to help you get the word out. Uh, but is it yeah. – um, yeah, and Wes, I, I think well, you know to advance the cause of uh, in this in the entrepreneurial world, and to advance the cause, of course, to grow the faith, to do all that. You know, I, everyone has to really try to work together in the sandbox. Have, have to work real well together, and especially all this new technology companies that are out there. It's um, you got to work well in the sandbox. And I think in the past, I think one of the challenges is at least in the at least what i'm learning uh, in the catholic space because i'm new to this i'm really you know from the hotel space is you know how do we all work together in the sandbox to advance the cause of the church or to advance the cause of you know whether it's the church or other business entities you know there's ways to work together that we can make progress uh as opposed to as opposed to not so it's pretty interesting to you know so what we're encouraging or what we're trying to encourage all these other profit and nonprofit companies in this space is let's try to work well together to advance the cause. And if you advance, if you do good, you know, you'll do well from a financial perspective we're all working together. Um, you know, so it's, it's an interesting paradigm shift because everyone likes to hold on to their territory. Um, and sometimes that's good. And sometimes that's bad to advance the cause. Well, what would you say to somebody though, that doesn't have the ability to raise $750,000 uh, to launch their business. Um, have you learned, I mean, going through this now, are there any, anything you would have done differently or is this kind of just the nature of the beast, uh, for the program you're releasing? Well, I, I think for the, the amount of dollars is, uh, I think if you, if you can create a vision, you know, and, and, and lead with the beautiful, create a vision for what you're trying to accomplish. Um, I think there, you can always find a financial way to make it happen. Um, you know, and I, I look back to my dad who, you know, moved five kids from, from Ireland to California and he was a hotel general manager in, in Ireland. And then when he moved to California, he was a circus promoter and a rodeo promoter. So he understood his strengths of who he was and his spiritual gifts. He understood who he was and he understood, you know, regardless of, um, the, hurdles or the impediments, you know, you, you, you continue to, you need to press forward. And then for my father, as an example, he moved from being a circus and a rodeo promoter to launching a car rental business. Uh, then he worked for the Northern Ireland government. So, you know, and in, in each iteration, I think of your entrepreneur world, you really have to reinvent yourself. And within the context of reinventing yourself, it's creating a vision for, you know, what you're trying to accomplish. And if you can create the why, uh, and then you have the what and the how, if you create that kind of vision and narrow it down, then, um, you know, I think you, there's a, a path to success, regardless if you're raising $75,000 or, you know, $20,000 to get a concept and our idea across the ground. Um, you know, I think it's, um, uh, if you, if you lead with the beautiful and lead with the why you'll start making progress, uh, and people will buy into your vision and, uh, and I said, buy into the fact that they'll buy into your vision, both from a perceptive value. And then potentially if you're asking them for money, um, they'll buy into your idea and your concept from a financial perspective as well. So uh, do you have any plans to take this as an engine and, and offer it in a non-secular setting? Cause I mean, there's a lot of cool features that, that could spill over, you know, into a lot of other areas. Absolutely. And I, I think what, what I've learned in my business career is it, you have to put your beachhead at one spot in one area, and then you have to be successful. And if you spread yourself too thin, you won't be successful. So, you know, and, and it is, I think as you said earlier in the Catholic space, it's, uh, you know, if you can crack that one, then you can crack just about anything. 
So, yeah, so our, our concept is really being focused right now on the Catholic space uh, since we're, you know, that that's what we're trying to do. And then, you know, ultimately, once we're successful in that area, the tools behind it, the, the technology, the back end infrastructure, the SaaS platform can be utilized in different, uh, you know, different religions or different areas of life, you know, to make uh, life more efficient and more successful. Very cool. So yeah, I'm looking at this right now, and it's um, it is it's it's an elegant app. I like to say lead, uh, lead with the beautiful. So who said that? Uh, I was at a conference about a month ago, and it's a uh, 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 Father Robert Barron talks oh, gotcha. about leading with the beautiful. Don't get caught up in the. He says don't get caught up in the inside baseball rules of life because then it just the wheel moves very slow. And lead with the beautiful. Lead with the vision. And uh, all the others will will follow, you know. And if you look at our app product today, we're we're about fifteen percent of the way there, twenty percent of the way there. So we're excited with, you know, the roadmap that we have because once we're one hundred percent out of the build, um, you know, over the next year, the the product will be you know even much better and continue to improve based on, you know, and we're building it for the needs of the parishioner or the needs of the Catholic, uh, and then we're trying to back into. And if you look at the marketplace, there's seventeen thousand parishes. Um, and one gentleman said, it's like having 17,000 store locations out there. Um, you know, and we're building it for the prisoner and then back end into the system for the parish. So, uh, it's a different kind of, in the app world, you lead with the consumer and then you back into everything else. And in your typical back end desktop software world, you, you build it for the staff for the technology for the staff. Um, so you, we try to switch the paradigm in this, in this new world that we live in. So walk me through the business plan uh, and because I'm always encouraging entrepreneurs, write a business plan on a napkin and then get going. Uh, you know, I learned you know, in the military, you know, they say no, no battle plan survives contact with the enemy, you know, but you still have to plan. Right. Uh, so um, y- you had a lot of experience, you know, your buddy, this, this VC back guy, a lot of experience and you bring in uh, Ryan with a lot of app development experience. So, you know, we're, we all making these 83 page, um, business plans, you know, or was it a, a one, two, three page type and, and you knew the general direction and got after it. Yeah. Well, we, we, we built out the why first, you know, what, what is the mission, the why behind the mission? And that was a two page, uh, documents, a word document that we built that out. So that was, that's our, that was actually our starting point. And so why are we doing this? Why are we in this space? What's our, what, what's our goals? What's our vision for the product? So we began with the why, and then we began, then the second stage was let's do some research on what the parishioner or the consumer wants. So we did some research in that area to see, do we validate our personal opinion? You know, with five kids, I got a busy life. I, I know what's missing from my world in relationship to, uh, you know, our parish as an example. So then build out the components of the products based on research, you know, and you can do in, in today's world, you can do research fairly inexpensively with, with the online space uh, and panel discussions and stuff like that. And then after that, then, you know, we, we struggled with what's the revenue model? Where's the revenue model? Um, so, but we had the first two components already built out, meaning the concepts, the idea of what were we trying to accomplish. And then we went to, we had a couple ideas on the revenue component and then we went to market and began asking, you know, if we launched this product, um, you know, and we had this type of revenue component attached to it, what's your thoughts? Is that something you would do, which are, you know, talk to Catholic parishes or diocese or the customer, is that something you'd be open to? And then we got the, yeah, that's actually a really good model, uh, that we would be open to. And, um, and then that began the process of fortifying our revenue model uh, beyond that because, you know, in our space, we, we knew we couldn't enter the market if we asked a Catholic parish, uh, you know, who, you know, for money to down to help us, uh, you know, implement the software. It wasn't going to work. So how do you make it frictionless on both sides of the coin as best as possible and look through the revenue model? Uh, and that was kind of the third stage was actually the revenue. Um, so we had the why we developed the, the, what of the product. And then we looked at the revenue side. Um, you know, we did not make an 80 page document. It was a small PowerPoint, you know, with 12 slides. Um, you know, people want to load it quickly. They want to encapsulate it, you know, 30, 30,000 feet elevator ride or an elevator ride to get the pitch. And then we began the process of raising money from there. 
Uh, and then once we began that process, then we had to begin building out, okay, a five-year budget. How's it going to look? What's the, what's the ramp up? You know, how do you move from risk capital into working capital? And where's that stage of the game? Uh, so all that stuff began, you know, as we began going to market and trying to raise the money. Right. And now, you know, you're doing this with Pope Francis as the Pope. So you got to follow his model. You've got to be driving little Toyota Tercels. Okay. I don't <laughs> want to see you in some big corporate Mercedes. Uh, I got, I, I just, I just uh, powered through a hundred thousand miles on my Toyota Highlander uh, <laughs> uh, last week, 10 years later. So, and my wife's car, I think is 120 on it. So we're, you know, we're, we're in the Toyota Tercel world. All right. Very nice. <laughs> just checking. Uh, so uh, any, any uh, gotchas, anything, uh, have you skinned your knee along the way? Anything that surprised you that just maybe kind of blindsided you that you had to overcome? Uh, you know, I, I think I'm, I'm a firm believer, and this is from my days in the hotel space. You know, if there's an issue, address the issue right there. Don't let things fester. So if there's an issue with the consumer and they have a, an issue with the app or they're saying something negative about the app, you know, go out, try to address it in the nicest way possible and try to resolve the conflict. If there's a conflict there or just a disagreement. Um, so we've run into, but people have been patient. I mean, I, I think if you're building a great product, people are patient with you. Um, you're going to have some hiccups. You're going to have some issues. Um, you know, and we've ran into plenty of those as we're, you know, you know, we have a thousand people download the app in the, in the beta from the couple parishes that we're at. And we work through all those issues on the front end, you know, uh, with the consumer and then on the back end with the, uh, you know, with the parishes themselves. But, uh, yeah, but you know, would, I think, I think we wouldn't you our, say people are, people are more patient when they don't pay for something. Yeah, <laughs> probably very true. And then you tell them it's in beta, you know, and if they give you a hard time, you're like, listen, this is a beta project. Now that will get harder, you know, as we roll out a beta into, you know, uh, you know, where people are less forgiving. But uh, at the same time, you know, um, you know, if you can address their concerns, meet them with where, where they're at, um, you know, and uh, someone talks to if you resolve the issue, someone will talk about it in a positive way. If you never resolve the issue, it's going to fester out there. And that's the last thing you want. So that, you know, just dealing with issues, uh, you know, technology issues, um, you know, we, we, we've dealt with and still working through and, um, you know, and then just uh, having patience having patience in the process. It's, it's, it, that's probably the more challenging part because, you know, you, you want to build it as quick as possible, uh, and put as many bodies behind it as possible. But then you, from a financial perspective, um, you know, as you raise money, as you raise that money, you know, to build your product, you have to raise money that gives you enough runway for, you know, probably an 18 month period, uh, even a 24 month period. Um, you know, to figure out the model to see if it's going to work. Um, so when you raise money, you're raising money for probably the next 18 to 24 months um, to ensure that you can, um, you know, go with the blows as they come in and try to find the, the correct business model and the revenue model to make money. So when you raise money, it's not you don't spend it. You have to spend it very wisely and conserve your cash um, and, you know, and uh, make sure that you have enough cash for 18 months to 24 months to make it happen. Um, you so, know, that, nope. that's a hard part. part. Have there been any surprises there? I mean, have you have you been hitting your numbers? That did you raise seven fifty, thinking you would only need two fifty, but you might as well go get more than you need. Well, I think I think the concept is the you know uh, um, I think one of my colleagues says you need if you have a, if you, it's a two mile runway, you probably should get a four mile runway. Um, you know, to land the plane just in case. Um, so I, I think, you know, for us, we'll probably spend the, you know, the, the money that we're, we bring in, but it will be over a, an 18 month period. Um, so yeah, so it's, uh, that's been challenging, you know, and really trying to figure out, okay, you know, as the entrepreneur, okay, when do I start taking a salary or when do, can, when, when can I take some money as well? Um, that takes the money, but uh, you know, I'm working hard. But then, you know, from a business perspective, I, you know, I, I, there's what I want to be paid and what I need to be paid. And there's, that's a, that's a gap. That's a gap and a gulf there that you have to, as an entrepreneur, then realize that and stretch yourself as much as possible. Um, you know, even though you've raised the money, that doesn't mean I can spend the money. Um, you know, I need to spend it wisely over a period of two years of time. Right. right. Have you all had any problems, um, 
I know there's always the the debate in in any faith, you know, certainly a Christian faith of, you know, does God want us to be poor? The meek shall inherit the earth, or does He want us to be successful? You know, with the the parable of the talents, and you know, one guy buries his gifts, and you know, basically gets beaten and thrown into prison, right? Right. So, how, how do you how do you balance that? You know, saying, hey. You know, ultimately, our goal is to serve a, a billion people and maybe have a billion dollar company, you know, versus, oh, we need to be meek and humble and, and drive Toyota to sales. Well, I, I, and I think Pope Francis says, I think there's a there's a fine line there of, um, you know, you know, the capitalistic world that we live in is helps advance the cause, you know, of capitalism and you know, and if you, if you earn money, then you, you know, at the same time, how do you do good and good deeds of service and acts? Because if you put just money behind something, you know, it may not work, but you have to incorporate the deeds of service and acts and stewardship uh, to help. So it's, it's that balancing act of, you know, but can you do both? Can you do well and do good and do good in the world at the same time? And that's a, this new generation of what we're seeing, um, you know, of what we would call new social enterprises, where, you know, and companies, smaller companies that are coming out, um, you know, are trying to find a way to do well and do good at the same time. So this, uh, this, this generation of millenniums that are coming through are actually trying to find a way to create social enterprises that do both. And can you do both? Sure you can, you know, but if you focus on the vision first, everything else will follow. And then, you know, as, as a good steward of your money, you need to be a good steward for your investors and then good, good steward for your cause and finding ways to, to give back and finding ways to, you know, also at the same time, help people grow in their faith journey, you know, um, overall. And you, you can do all three. There are all these different threads that can come together, but you have to put all these pieces of the puzzle together. Um, and that's, you know, making money is one component of the larger piece of the puzzle. Right. But you got to make money because, um, you know, it, that's the way of the world, unfortunately, is you have to make money to continue to invest in your product and to grow your product. Otherwise, your product's in a graveyard. And you had a great idea and a great concept, but you, 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 couldn't, you couldn't move the ball down the field, whether it's financial or other issues, and, uh, and you need cash to do that. And I, I think Pope Francis recognizes that, um, you know, that you need to make money. And then, but then what do you do with your money is the next stage of the process. Right. Uh, well, this has been fantastic. Where, where can people find you on the web? Where do you, where do you want people to, to visit you? Yeah, our web platform is oneparish.com, O-N-E, parish.com. And then, uh, you know, on the App Store, we're on Google Play, uh, One Parish, and then we're on the App Store for your iPhone, uh, One Parish as well as the name of the app. And then we ask anyone to download it, provide us feedback. We'd love your thoughts. And, um, you know, we're excited about the... Uh, journey that we're we have undertaken and excited about the direction of uh how we think we can help uh grow the faith hey amen brother well uh thanks for taking the time uh good luck i've got your app on the phone i'm checking it out uh and uh do my little small part to uh, help you succeed so i appreciate you coming on the show thanks for your time wes all right man have a great day Cheers. there you have it um, did you notice early on he talked about how they, they whiteboarded the idea in about two hours they knew they were on to something? You know, when the moment strikes, run with it. You know, uh, that type of creative brainstorming, uh, get to flesh things out with good people. You know, surround yourself with good people uh, and, and drill down, map things out, kick it around until you know that you're on to something. Or maybe you know that you're not. Okay, but they, they dove right in. But then when they knew they had something, um, they started to raise the capital. Uh, they worked with somebody with experience uh, in developing these types of apps. Uh, and then, you know, notice what he said later on. You know, lead with the beautiful. Okay, create a vision for what you want to accomplish and lead with the beautiful. And I've learned this over the years as well. You know, that's a nice way of saying uh, it's 10% product and 90% promotion, all right? Now, we're assuming you have a good product, so I'm not saying you put crap out there, uh, but making a better mousetrap is an old wives' tale, okay? If you really know the story, it's quite interesting. Uh, maybe I'll get into that uh, in another podcast. You know, but everybody, uh, you know, they want to attribute that to Wolf, Wolf, 
Ralph Waldo Emerson. Uh, but in reality, um, he didn't talk about it. Woolworth uh, didn't talk about it. You know, they did, but they, they said it in not as good of a way. It was an ad man uh, that turned that thing around and cleaned it up and spruced it up. His name was Albert Hubbard. Look him up. Uh, good little story uh, for you to understand the power of the written word, of the spoken word, uh, to create the vision, um, to create the beautiful, if you will, in the mind of the prospect. Uh, so make a good product, but promote it like crazy, uh, which is what Shane is getting into now. Okay. And then finally, you know, they built out the why first. But, he, you know, he said it was just a two-page Word document. These 85 and 185-page business plans, are, are, I think, are bygone era, especially if you're an entrepreneur uh, doing things, you know, bootstrapping it. You've got to be able to explain this simply and execute it quickly, okay, and then adjust on the fly. I, had, I wrote a, uh, a blog post, a Weekly Whisper, not too long ago. Um, actually, I think it was last week. Man, time flies about, you know, what do 93% of successful companies have in common? And it's that they all change direction somewhere along the way. And so, but they got in the game. You know, I always say you can't steer a parked car. So they got in the game and they adjusted. So when you create these crazy business plans, uh, you, you feel like you've got to hold on to it, right? Because you've got so much invested in just planning, you feel like an idiot to change midstream or even, you know, two steps into it when you realize it's not going to work that way. So they created a two-page Word document. They got clear on the why. They got clear on the vision. Okay. Then they got clear on what the user wanted. That's the main thing. Find a need and fill it. That's why we are in business. That's why we get paid. And the more people you help, and the bigger the need you fill, the more money you will make. Okay? Money is not evil. The love of money is evil. So anybody telling you that money is evil, they're either ignorant or they're manipulating you. Either way, get away from them. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast. You can check out the notes at uh, saleswhisper.com forward slash Shane dash O'Flaherty. And as always, I thank you for listening. Uh, feel free to Share this with your social media friends and check out the art of the guru so you can sell mo better. And in the meantime, remember to sell different. <laughs>